Hello again there, neighbors and naysayers. This is Clint Finney for another Eastern Ohio Grazing Council web update. We're going to talk today about some of the annuals that I planted around the farm, some of the new and cool things that we've done. And we're going to do this today, but we're also going to update some of them as we go here later in the fall. But I thought it would be interesting along with some of the Beth, some of the presentations that Beth has done and is doing on different forages and weeds that we have out in our pasture fields. Thought it'd be cool to take a look at some of the annuals that we've talked about putting in the pasture and what they look like and, and what they've done for us over time. So let's get started. Just down the hill in the waning sunlight here from where I took the video the other day. This is our last strip of grass that hasn't been grazed yet this year uh, that will graze with the sheep and the steers. I still got about 12 acres of grass that hasn't, well, it's only been grazed once, but it was really early uh, in the year, but it looks about like this, <clears throat> that the cows will graze here the next week or so. But just thought I'd take a quick video because we've been talking about all these annuals. And this is, I'm just stepping into where they were yesterday. But in the view here, turnips. These are turnips I planted this spring on this field. This field we uh, unrolled bales on for several years. You can see the size of that turnip, and that's just an average turnip. You all know me, and you know I got big hands, and that's a big turnip. We'll take that one home. It doesn't have any cuts in it or anything. Uh, one cool thing about planting turnips in your pasture field is the byproduct is you get something to eat. But we uh, we planted turnips in this field because we'd unrolled bales. We had kind of a dead spot here in this field. It's taken two or three years to kind of get it to recover. And I just decided this spring roll some Italian rye grass and turnips. And I think we planted Dutch clover in here because we couldn't get crimson that day. But uh, got a lot of, of annual or Italian rye. Um, didn't see a lot of white clover, but that doesn't mean anything because how would we notice? We got white clover everywhere. And then a bunch of these turnips. So uh, this is, I think we've got one more field that we planted turnips in. Just spread them on top of the ground early spring. But sheep and cow, there's stalker steers, don't seem to be eating them. But the cows will munch the, at least half of this turnip once they get it up out of the ground. Uh, one of our cows, the other day I caught her with her head up in the air and she was chewing and I said, man, something's wrong with her. She's got something in her mouth. We get up there and it's a turnip about this size that she's just chomp, chomp, chomping on. And I knew it was a turnip when I got within about five or six feet of her because I could smell the turnip. So I guess the quick video story here is, it's kind of cool, these cover crops and these additional seeds we're putting out there. I'm not sure how much good they're doing. Uh, if you walk this field, you'll find 10, 15, 20 turnips that either they didn't eat or that's all that grew. I don't know. I couldn't tell you because this was thick in here, but it's kind of neat to see different things growing in the field. And the way I look at it is that's a space that nothing else was growing. So this turnip took root. And like I said, byproduct is these turnips are pretty delicious. So just thought I'd show you that. I may take some other videos, some of the other weird stuff we've planted over the farm this year, just to kind of get an idea. Sometimes I don't know whether it's worth the seed, but sure is interesting when we go out there and, and sure put some diversity to our pasture fields. Purple top turnip in the wild here. You can see the turnip there. If Ethan finds that, he'll be out to pick it, take it home for his mother. Um, this is a just a piece where we had part of the outside rotted bale fall off as we were unrolling bales and the turnips really took and this it seems to be where the turnips take the best but just so if you saw that big turnip you see what it actually looks like and sheep cows everything just love the tops of those things they just eat them right up put this presentation together several weeks ago kind of been lining some presentations up but happened to catch a cow in the last little bit of, of area that i spread it uh purple top turnips in this is kind of the odd area around the outside of the hog barn 
gets torn up when we're hauling manure out. Uh, also has, it's kind of a staging area for compost material. So it's, it's pretty weedy and, and we graze it uh, whenever the cows are close by. I wish I had taken a picture after grazing because all that weed material you see behind you was all grazed completely down. I clipped it the other day, but there wasn't even anything left to clip. But happened to catch this old Murray Gray cow looking around on the ground. I couldn't figure out what she was doing, and I couldn't get my phone to record fast enough, but I got some still pictures. That's a turnip in her mouth. She's already bit half of it off, um, but she's she's holding her head up and chewing and chewing and chewing. She lost that turnip about four or five times while I was sitting there and she'd sniff around on the ground till she'd find it and she'd pick it back up and chew on it again. And I think they chew on it until they get tired of it and they go on to something else. But just thought it would be cool to show you a picture of a cow eating a turnip. To go along with that first video I shot, I came up here to find some seed heads here. Um, this is some of that Italian ryegrass that I planted in this field. That's about the only ones I could find. I drove all over the field. There's one more, I guess. Um, looking for some of the seed heads, but the sheep and stalkers kind of prefer that Italian ryegrass down here. So they come here and find it, seek it out, and it's gone. Lots of orchard grass and fescue seed heads. Part of the reason we did this and kind of deferred grazing on this field was because we had unrolled bales on it two years or three years and just had some bare spots and some rough areas and it really needed reseeded but it was growing some things back and I didn't want to put whole reseeding together here so we just let it go to seed deferred grazing let it go to seed good red clover white clover orchard grass fescue timothy Italian ryegrass why not just let it go to seed we don't need the grass didn't need the grass early let it go to seed let it plant this whole area with a new set of seeds. Um, not not just that, but what was in the bales, kind of let it come up and, and come to it. I said in that last video, if you walked this field, you'd find 20 or 30 turnips. As I drove around looking for the Italian ryegrass seed heads, I found about 150 turnips. So all the tops are gone, just the turnips are laying there on top of the surface. But again, as we talk about these kind of seeds and mixes that we put out and things, uh, just showing you that it's here. I mean, I don't know that we really needed it once it really grew into something But at least we covered it up and we gave that those bare spots something to grow Still here in the pollinator planting but one thing I messed up on that video of Italian rye that was two-year-old Italian rye That's why it had seed head to it. This is just some Italian rye I put in with the pollinator mix just to help it go through the cedar don't have very much of it, but there's some of it in here. But just to clarify that, Italian rye, first year, kind of makes this nice soft-leafed grass. And then the second year, it'll come up and make a seed head. So that field's been planted two years, or covered two years with Italian ryegrass seed. That's why we had Italian ryegrass seed heads in that field. While we're on the subject of things I planted this year, this is the new kid on the block right here. Crimson clover, more of a southern variety of clover, uh, more behaves like an annual here in Ohio, uh, but I planted a bunch of it, and I had a lot of it in the spring. I just rode all over, about a 14 acre pasture. I had bunches of crimson in a month or so ago, and couldn't find any of it. I had to come over here to the pollinator habitat planting to find one, to put one on a video, but our hope is that this will seed, and you can see it's got seeds in it there, and reseed itself for next year. One just popped out my finger, um, and it'll come back and and be here for next year. Well, um, well, I guess while I'm here, I'll give you the broader view here. This is a pollinator habitat planting we put in this spring. Lots of black-eyed Susans right now. Right there's a partridge pea flowering uh, lots of red clover have a lot of crimson in it early hopefully we'll see what it's got here coming up there'll be some other things supposed to plant or bloom all through the year so kind of an interesting little edge of the farm we put in this pollinator habitat our hope and our goal here is that some of these flowers will fill in in the pasture field and 
kind of give us a little bit of a prairie look to our pasture and you know me and diversity is never a an issue I, I don't mind having a diversity and even if it's a weed it's something that the cows aren't going to eat for what little space it takes up and the help that the pollinators will give us in the pasture field it's worth a shot we go from sorghum sedan to what i'm afraid might be one of our not so good things of the year these are baby switchgrass plants just starting to come out of the ground uh may also be some of the other warm seasons because i planted kind of a mix but predominantly switchgrass in this field and then we didn't get any rain didn't get any rain didn't get any rain and so it didn't sprout but um field's kind of getting taken over and weeds foxtail and other things but one of the cool things is right there in front is a radish daikon radish uh, i mixed oats daikon radish in this mix you can see some of the oats coming to you there um just to have something growing green I, um of course i got weeds but i didn't didn't really plan on having that many weeds uh but that's a daikon tillage radish so you know i i never want to plant a monoculture didn't want to plant just switchgrass didn't want to plant so we got uh radishes oats and crimson clover planted in this field and the plan kind of was get one of each per square foot and then the switchgrass too uh, just to have something growing and then we also mixed in big blue stem little blue stem indian grass and a bag of pollinator mix too just to get some diversity out here if this takes uh, the switchgrass planting it'll be kind of cool to see when it's done of course the radishes oats will die out and the uh, perennials will be left behind but i don't know whether it's going to go or not at this point it's kind of weedy it's kind of a rough year but i can even see a partridge pea over there in the in the mix so we'll see we're just going to keep kind of babying this one and hope that it comes along again an update a couple weeks later of the radishes uh, we planted those in the switchgrass but also i planted some on the edges uh, just to see what they would do and what we could get and uh, <clears throat> this is ethan holding the radish now that's a big radish and we broke it off as we were pulling it out of the field in fact we didn't even pull that off i hit it with the four-wheeler tire and it popped up out of the ground uh, so i reached down and grabbed it and, and that's how much that was a what we measured from dirt to the bottom of the radish was about 12 inches um and you can see that it's still just as big there as it as it could as it is up further up uh, so who knows how deep that radish really was in the field and, and that particular field there on the edge had tile um <laughs> hans and i were talking we a little bit concerned about it getting into the tile but uh, at least we know that field had been cropped the most probably at our farm. So we know there's a plow pan and that radish is through that plow pan. So it's going to be interesting to see what the drainage characteristics kind of that field are now once those radishes have been in there, but something I'll certainly do again, something I'll, I'll, I'll spread the radishes seem to do just as well in the grass as they did anywhere else. We'll try them again next year, see how things go. But Cows uh, will eat the tops of the radish. They don't care for the radish itself, or at least the edges where I where I had them. Maybe they were so thick that they didn't they didn't they ate some of them, but didn't want to eat all of them. But I didn't notice any of them with bite marks on them, so I don't think they were eating much of them. But Ethan, one day while I was building fence, stacked up all the radishes that he could grab quick on the back of the four wheeler, and we carried them over to move sheep. Then after that. And, he threw some out with the sheep and stalker steers and they were gone the next morning. Now, I don't know whether the sheep ate them, what they did, or some wildlife came along and got them, but they were gone. So the sheep were actually eating that radish. Just as a side note, I took took one home. They said that they, they eat those things in, in some cultures and I shaved a piece of it off and, and ate it. And it, it wasn't like any radish I ever had in a salad. It was, it, I told my wife it tastes like kerosene. So I cut up some of it and, and fried it up a little bit and it tastes about like a turnip, but still it's really cool to see those out there in the field and, and growing and 
kind of think about what effect they could have. It's just amazing how much forage those things produce and how much quantity dry matter of radish that those things produce in a field that didn't have any fertility added to it. So kind of a cool thing to maybe think about for cover crops and annuals. This is uh sorghum sedan grass we planted a couple weeks ago. It didn't get rain. It finally got rain. It's finally starting to come and really this is the first day I come up to the field and could really see it coming, but we're hoping to be grazing that in about 30 days or so, but this is we're on our tour here of cool things we planted. Just thought it was interesting to point out that sorghum sedan's coming. Uh, we were worried about whether the grass would shade it and whether it would beat the grass out, but it got so dry that nothing grew, so we think it'll be all right. We think we'll it'll beat the grass here and go up and grow something. We'll be keeping you updated in the next couple weeks. That first photo there was before we got some rain uh, back again. And I, I talked with some folks the week of, the, of our county fair about the sorghum sedan, and they all said, well, keep us updated. Keep us updated on how things look once we get some rain, if we get some rain. So here's some, some later pictures. Um, the one on the left was just taken two or three days ago. The one on the right um, was probably a week and a half, two weeks ago. And that actually was a place where we had a temporary water trough, portable water trough just a bare spot in the field and I was planting the field above it and saw that bare spot down over the hill and said, you know what, while I'm here with a drill, I'm just going to go drill through it and see if we can get something to grow. And boy, the sorghum sedan grew like crazy in those bare spots. You can see another one down toward the neighbor's house there. Um, it was amazing, the difference. And we really don't know whether it's because that spot held moisture or whether it's the added fertility or a combination of the two, but the sorghum sedan really did good there. Uh, the left hand picture is just that uh, field I planted after right after grazing. Uh, one thing we're we're kind of learning: a, this wasn't a good year to try. It's dry, and so we can't really take any of our results. But that sorghum sedan, I I didn't think about fertility. I didn't think about planting it in the more fertile fields. I just kind of planted it, and uh, we really think it it would really shine in fields that had some fertility, uh, where these ones are in the 20s probably with phosphorus. Uh, and nitrogen just supplied by clover. So kind of interesting, and we'll see here in the next slide, there's a video of the cows getting turned out into it. Uh, it said that it started 18 inches. Well, average, it was about 18 inches. It didn't get the, the coverage on the field that I wanted to, or wanted to see, but at this point, it's what I got, it's what I can graze, so it was time to turn into it one way or the other. An exciting day here at Spring Valley Farm. About to turn out on sorghum sedan. Any minute now you see there are cows busting through the gap and out into switchgrass and I'm standing in or sitting in one of the worst parts of it. So I had to turn out in this stuff when it was 18 inches tall. Well, because of dry weather, 18 inches tall was pretty hard to attain, but you can see some of it's pretty tall. Where the cows are going up there, it's a lot taller. Um, we'll see how it goes. Thing is, when we finally got rain, the grass come the same as the switch or sorghum sedan did, and it, it kind of stayed with it, and there was no real opportunity to get in there and graze it again to let the sorghum sedan release. So. This is what we got, and uh, hopefully we don't graze it too hard. Hopefully we got something to regrow, but I wanted to get a quick video just of what we're doing here. And for any of you that saw them busting through that gap and wondered why, it kind of looks junky there. The previous landowner had a gate there, and when we built the fence again, we just kind of left it there for some reason. I don't know why. We never did know why he put a gate there. But that has, it grew up in brush and you can see a walnut tree grew up in front of it. And that has been invaluable this summer with 90 degree heat because I opened that back up and allowed the cows from this whole 16 acre field 
to come back to this point and go to shade during the afternoon and we had pasture down in there we could graze in the trees and then we bring them back up here at night and graze and this is uh 5 30 in the evening so i'm just moving them up here now gotta go get the water trough i got a temporary water line up there at the corner if you can see where that reel is the temporary water line comes to right there and uh We'll water them off of that. It's on top of the ground along the contour. This strip's 160 feet wide and rolls around back to the road. There's another strip up above. It's 160 feet wide. It really looks like a jack-o'-lantern smile. My biggest concern was getting a good stand in that field, and I didn't get it. Um, but the top of the hill is also planted. It's a really good stand. So we'll see how it goes. Um, for those of you that worry about prussic acid, nitrate, of course i'm worried about it too the good thing is we've grazed all the way around these fields and the calves have been out in it and haven't lost a calf yet so i don't assume we're going to lose a cow so that's it for today sorghum sedan you can kind of see that cow walking the sorghum sedan's overhead and there's a seed head even out there on one plant so that's it for today we'll let you know how it goes all right so Next night, I believe this is the 9th of September, it's about 7.30, the cows were given this strip and then moved on to the next piece up above for the day and of course they were given the piece behind me for the hot times of the day they went down there and hung out under the trees but this is what this field looks like after the cows went through it, you all saw it in the video before. Um, you can see some stubble here and there of sorghum sedan. We'll see whether it comes back. A big patch up there last night. You couldn't even see the post or the other reel. And now it's completely gone. The one other cool thing about this sorghum sedan that I'm noticing is this had just as much rest as some of the other fields that we've already grazed because we were kind of protecting this. But there's a massive amount of forage down here on the ground, not counting the sorghum sedan. Um, I, I'm wanting to say it's the diversity, but I don't know. It, it, but Hans said the same thing a year ago, that it really had an effect on the grass. And and I'm seeing it. It, it, it just looks different. So Ethan's my trusty assistant out here killing ironweed, or at least trying. We got plenty of it to kill i didn't clip this field because i drilled through it and we run over 90 percent of the iron weed that was in the field so we just got a few and that's not a bad thing because it's pretty good butterfly habitat it's pretty good pollinator habitat when it's seeding when i clipped the field here next to it um i clipped from the outside in which i shouldn't have done because when i got to the center i had bunches of bunches of monarch butterflies that i had to kind of let fly off and go to ironweed somewhere else but still um just wanted to show you can see some baby there's some little uh, sorghum sedan still in the field there's one piece of it right here there's another piece of it up here i would have thought the cows would have annihilated it but they really didn't so we'll see what comes back hope that helped to give you some insight into some of the annuals that We've planted at the farm. Uh, there are many, many, many different other annuals that we could be looking into uh, out there, and we've talked about them over time. Uh, you've got to kind of pick what fits and what suits your farm. And as I tell the crop guys, you know, it's just something you got to try. You got to try a couple times and see whether you get it right. We all want the right answer right out of the gate, but I think all of these are things that we just have to give them a try and see what situation they work out the best in like i said many other options out there i urge you all to give them all a shot and uh, see what need you have for forage and, and what, what one of these annuals will help fill that gap so with that i'll say we'll see you next time